G'day viewers, how are you? Congratulations, we've made it to Hump Day, Wednesday, which means it's time for Wanger Fat Wednesday, where I talk about what am I not giving a fuck about today, or who am I not giving a fuck about today? Bit of both. Today, I'm not giving a fuck about Donald Trump's complete fuckery in North Korea with his peace summit with Kim Jong-un. And I'll tell you why I'm not giving a fuck not giving a fuck, even though the stakes are rather high. I mean, what I want, I want to be wrong. When I look at the motivations of Trump, the behavior of Trump, the actions of Trump, and the way he seems to be just getting totally played uh, as a sucker by one of the worst dictators in the world, I want to be wrong because the well-being of, you know, the peoples of North and South Korea and the larger world is more important than the fact I think Trump's a prick. And... When you see Trump's desperation for this to be a big thing that is, you know, his story, it's clearly his ego. He, he he wants his ego fed. He wants to be a great man. He wants to point and see, I did what no one else could do. And as insufferable as that would make him, I hope it ends up being true. I don't think it will be. You see, he's thinking like, oh, I've signed a contract with Kim uh, to move towards denuclearization. Now... Kim's promised this at least half a dozen times in the last decade or so. And guess what? Every time, he was lying. I mean, who knew a despotic dictator that starves virtually his whole country while living a lush life, you know, uh, would not be trustworthy. It's, if you can't trust murderous dictators, I mean, who can you trust? It's, it's like we could only, if we only had history of seeing when you're dealing with a dictator when they say oh i'm moving towards peace hey <laughs> neville chamberlain had it right he went to hitler and said pretty please no war hitler said i sign a thing no war chamberlain said yay no war because he promised and kim this is i know it's a little bit abstract to bring hitler up but Kim himself, like I said, at least half a dozen times since he's been in power, has said, oh yeah, okay, everyone um, will drop sanctions if I denuclearize. Okay, I'll do that. And he's not telling the truth. Yeah, maybe this time's true. Maybe this will be the time when I have to go, oh gee, Trump did what everyone else couldn't and increased peace in the world. And very specifically for some very troubled neighbours in North and South Korea. I mean, just because he seems to be shafting South Korea, just out of the blue saying, oh, no more joint military exercises with South Korea. It's too confrontational, which to be fair, it absolutely was. But then when you find out the person who suggested to Trump that he uh, dropped those exercises with South Korea was Vladimir Putin. It's like, okay, it's so far through the looking glass on this. Like, it's absolutely surreal. When you go back and see, particularly people like Fox News talking heads, uh, if Obama ever said anything remotely about, hey, let's negotiate with this guy, they lost their fucking mind. And Trump is just giving away everything, and it's like, he's the greatest thing ever. Like I said, I want to be wrong. Don't think I'm going to. When you look at uh, Trump, and his complete uh, ego-driven hubris, and his lack of ability to actually do anything meaningful, the most likely outcome is nothing. You know, absolutely nothing. Probably setbacks for South Korea, um, them feeling weaker, uh, Kim just turning this into a massive propaganda coup, uh, which I think he already has. And, you know, at worst... Uh, it possibly inflames things because Trump or someone on his team ends up saying something so inflammatory it actually causes conflict. I have not. I hope I'm wrong. I think the people of North and South Korea deserve a break. And if it literally took someone who was so unhinged that uh, the North and South looked at each other and went, he will do something that makes no sense. He will provoke a war to stoke his ego. You know, People could lay out in front of him how many millions of people would die in the first week and he wouldn't care. Or at least his attention span means he'd forget it two days later. So, look, if Trump achieves what no one else could, then I'm all for it. Like, yes, okay, talking up Kim and saying, oh, look, the people love him. I've seen it. It's like, yeah, it's amazing what displays 
dictators who deprive people of knowledge of the outside world and sell them a god mythology. It's amazing what reaction they can get from the people. Uh, and to actually say he's great. just like seeing Trump say this stuff does my head in. And because like literally if all Obama had to say was, uh, I think we need to negotiate something here and the right wing pundits lost their fucking mind. Trump's actively praising him. Like, hey, let's have the American flag and the Korean flag. Yeah. Which look, honestly, if it got a result, it's the right thing to do. I don't think it's going to get a result. All evidence, historical evidence and current evidence suggests it will not achieve anything and possibly something really bad will happen because of what a bunch of loose cannons the Trump administration is. But hey, Trump's sucking up to Kim, uh, debasing the Americans and shitting on the South Koreans. If it results in a meaningful change and an increase in the likelihood of peace in that part of the world, and in fact the broader world, I'm all for it. Just because Trump's acting on the advice of the Russian dictator Putin, praising the North Korean dictator Kim, um, and being inconsistent from second to second, sure, maybe something could happen that's good. I really don't think so, but this is one of these times where I desperately want to be wrong.